Okay, so now our motor is ready for a, a water pump change. So we are going to pull the gear case off, disassemble water pump housing, take everything apart, inspect. Uh, I know that we're gonna be replacing the impeller for sure and the gaskets, uh, wear plate, all those things. May wind up replacing the water pump housing depending on if there's been any melting or damage to it. But if it's in perfect shape, it'll go back into service. That time when everything is apart, we'll also have a chance to check out the upper seals on the upper uh, drive shaft seal on the gear case and verify that it's in good shape with no visible defects or damage to the seals. First thing I'm going to do is remove our little grommet here so I can pull the trim tab zinc. Um, obviously, not all gear cases are the same. The Yamaha keeps a bolt hidden under the trim tab zinc. And in order to be able to drop the gear case, that bolt's got to come off and the trim tab zinc's got to come off as well. Once this gear case comes loose, there are some considerations with Yamaha uh, in that the speedometer pickup is a little plastic piece that is smaller in diameter than my pinky. And if this thing's wiggling around too much, either when you're pulling the gear case out or when you're reinstalling it after the water pump change, it's very easy to snap that thing off, especially if it's got a few years on it and it's a little bit dry rotted and brittle. So just something to look out for. We'll show you on camera once we get this thing off exactly what we're talking about. Pulling our last bolt out from under the trim tab sink here. So we go back to our deep well 14. Break it loose, break it loose carefully. Oh, stubborn. Break it loose carefully because if this thing slips, you've got this lovely, really sharp prop right here. A lot of people move, remove the prop first. I'm sure that's a very wise and safe thing to do. I did not on this go around. This one's quite corroded. Um, this, uh, this bolt not coming out as nicely as I'd like. Now, as you probably can't see this on camera, but there is, that bolt, the last bolt is loose. Haha, <laughs> never mind. There's another bolt in there. Forgot about that guy. Break the final bolt loose. God damn. Man, I could have been fighting that the rest of the afternoon, Leon. And you can see that this gear case is firmly held on by some sort of gunk. Typically corrosion. This is where, if you're not careful, you will break off the speedometer pickup on the front of the gear case. So we're going to gently wiggle. You should see it starting to work its way loose, assuming I got all the bolts out. And I did. And I did. And I should have my big handy screwdriver. Hey, we passed me the screwdriver early on. There we go. Can I use that? With hand on gear case, hand on bottom of skeg, wherever you can find a safe grip. I like the bottom of the skeg for this. There's a little tiny spot, a notch in the front of some of these Yamahas that you can pry on. Once you get it to start moving a little bit. Starting to get enough room now. Again, it is starting to come the rest of the way loose always have something below the gear case to catch it. And by something, I mean you. Because when it comes loose, it's going to come loose quick. Okay.
All right, now we have our gear case off and we've got it in our stand and we are getting ready to tear the water pump housing off and take a look down there and go ahead and, you know, we're gonna pull the impeller and everything out and replace it. If it has been a very long time since the water pump was off or if it's never been off, sometimes these bolts will fight. Do your very best not to ring them off. They shouldn't require much torque to get them moving. And when they go back on, they shouldn't require much torque either. Once I get them loose, switch over to the electric impact. Now we are ready to bring off the housing. It's okay, it usually wiggles free without too much of a fight. Um, I would strongly urge not to pry too aggressively. You don't want to damage any sort of flat surfaces or gasket surfaces. You want to make sure that it, when it goes back together, it's got a nice clean seal all the way around. All right, we've removed our water pump housing and we're confronted with something that, as far as I can tell, is unique to Yamaha, which is the drive shaft collar and nylon drive shaft spacer that holds a wave washer assembly on, on and also secures the water pump impeller, wear plate, gasket, all that stuff. So we got to pull these guys off in order to be able to finish tear down on the water pump assembly itself. For that, we have uh, created the insert that goes with our upper bearing carrier puller right here. And this is originally created to, look, just as it sounds, pull the upper bearing carrier out of gear cases. It's designed for most manufacturers. It works really well in this setting. Um, however, for the Yamaha drive shaft collar, we created this little insert. And this insert basically slides between the bottom of the drive shaft collar itself and the little flange on the nylon spacer underneath. So once we have that in place, we're nice, it's happy, we're happy that it's, it's properly secured. We fit our puller to it, make sure that the teeth are locked down, locked in place, and we pull. And we pull. And we're off. And as you can see, that took seconds. As compared to all the other methods that I've worked with in the field, this is by far the fastest and most peaceful way of dealing with this little product that Yamaha seems to stick by generation and generation out. These guys really like to stick together the drive shaft collar assembly. They really like to make life difficult. Should be a fast thing to remove, and it is with our puller. Now we have a wave washer assembly, which is three pieces, two fly washers and a wave washer in the middle. Those need to go back into service. So when you're pulling the impeller off, set those aside because they're going right back in with the new one. They do not come with the water pump repair kit. Now we're just gonna pull our impeller off it usually requires a little bit of prying for that. I try to line up a screwdriver or something on top of using one of these little dowel pins as the fulcrum so that I'm prying on something that I feel like I won't damage. These guys have been in the, in the field for a while or in the water. They may be a little bit stubborn. But usually they come loose pretty easily on Yamahas. Some of the other manufacturers, they may fight a little more or a little less. Next, we have a Woodruff key. Gotta be kidding me, two of these in a row. Two of these in a row, Leon.
Yeah, that one's seized. Um, okay, so we're in the middle of our water pump tear down here. I have a situation that is unfortunately uh, familiar with working with Yamahas in that our Woodruff key is thoroughly seized into the drive shaft. What I normally do in this situation if a chisel won't get it out is obviously I wind up shearing off a little piece of the Woodruff key and that gives me a nice flat area which I will drill out, make a tiny little pilot hole and then I'll be able to hook our uh, end cap removal tool that we fit, that's fitted for an air impact or an air hammer to take the key out the rest of the way. So it's obviously a procedure you have to be very careful with. You need a very sharp drill bit. Um, this is definitely something that requires a, a great deal of precision. So, and, and uh, always a little bit of luck as well. This is a slightly sharper bit. The main thing I'm trying to do here is just stay lined up in the Woodruff key, stay out of the drive shaft. Which I did. I think I got enough to get our tool on there. Okay, so we've drilled out a little pilot hole in our Woodruff key and I'm gonna use our impact tool here to break it loose. This is an impact and uh, an air hammer attachment that we created originally so that we could break loose trim cylinder and tilt cylinder end caps. And basically the way it works is you take that little hook right there, you put it down in the, the holes for the pin wrenches to go into, for the spanner wrenches to seat into, get a grip in that hole and just hammer away and it starts spinning the cap. It's, it's a destructive method. It's not meant for something you're gonna try to reuse. Uh, I also use these when I'm dealing with stuck Woodruff keys. I drill a little pilot hole like I just mentioned. If I can get away without using heat on this, I will. So I'm gonna try it cold first and see how it goes. If worse comes to worse, I may have to take a torch and, and warm it up just a little bit. And for that, I try to use map gas or something that's not oxyacetylene so that I don't melt all the seals and anything in the area of what I'm trying to heat up, I'm trying to be as minimally invasive as possible. So with this tool, I'm going to get it lined up in our hole here and uh, just give it a few bursts and see if it starts working loose. And with a little bit of luck, we'll have it out in no time. And we're out. Okay, so we've drilled out and removed our Woodruff key uh, with no damage to the drive shaft, I might add. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the wear plate loose and the gasket. And this is a very commonly overlooked part. This one's in good shape, but if you see a damper seal that's all blown out right here and it's just a big swollen mess, now's your big chance to remove it and replace it. We're just checking it out, making sure it's good, and we're making sure the bracket that it, seats, that it sits in is in good shape as well. I'm happy with all this. It can go back into use. Make sure our gasket gets back down in there. Now we're gonna check this, and the first thing I'm gonna do is pull our little cover off. Let's see what we got. Hmm. Okay, what we got here is our upper carrier seal. Our oil seal has come apart, or it's beginning to come apart. You can see a little bit of emulsified gear oil here. And you can also see where the parts of the spring itself, or the, the spring that goes around the, uh, the drive shaft seal, the, the oil seal, has come apart. And it's gonna need to be replaced before this thing goes back into action. Otherwise, you will definitely have a situation where you have water getting into this gear case and oil getting out, the fatal combination. So for this, we will be pulling our upper carrier and we will be replacing our two drive, our two oil seals that sit there. Now we have the components for the Yamaha water pump kit laid out here on the uh, cart and we are going to get these things put together. Um, some of these components are gonna go into the water pump housing itself.
and some things like the wear plate and gasket or, and woodruff key are going to go will be installed on the gear case before we install everything else and of course the impeller so the basics are we have uh, and this is a Yamaha kit there's some variation generally in manufacturer to manufacturer as far as what comes in a repair kit but generally speaking you'll have a new wear plate wear plate gasket new woodruff key these are the o-rings that go behind this uh, metal insert that goes into the housing this one goes in the bottom side of the housing in your impeller and Yamaha's unique uh, addition to this is the drive shaft collar and the nylon drive shaft spacer and wave washer assembly so the first thing I'm going to do is I usually uh, use a little dab of grease which I have right here take a little bit of grease wipe that inside the water pump housing so that I have something there to hold everything in place because our little o-ring likes to go wandering around and I don't want it to go anywhere so I'm pressing it into its little groove there leave some grease on the sides give it one last visual make sure that it's in the nicely set in the groove All right, now and take our little cartridge insert here. It's got little alignment tabs in it. And those match up with our alignment grooves in the water pump housing. The alignment's a little bit off. This thing will not seat correctly and you will have a problem. So it's very important to make sure that our alignment is good. There, that time it sat down nicely. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more grease. Just right around the edge of the insert cup here. These are the grooves that the larger O-ring is, is gonna sit in. And I find that grease helps these things stay put. I try never to use contact cement or anything like that in here. I've found every manner of adhesive in this little space. I don't really care for it. What I would like is a little bit of grease and I would like our o-ring to seat properly and stay put. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of excess grease here. With that I'm gonna take my little bit of excess probably have to add a little bit more and I want to have a nice thin film of grease on the inside of our cartridge insert. So I'm just wiping that all around. I don't want any big globs. Just a nice thin film of grease there. Okay. Now the housing is, re is put back together. Next thing I'm gonna do, grease up our mounting bolts. And again, this doesn't take much. Nice thin film on our threads. Okay, and now we're ready to move over and take our wear plate, wear plate gasket, and woodruff key over to the gear case itself and get that stuff ready to go to uh, have everything ready to install the new impeller. Now we're ready to start installing things on the gear case itself. So the first thing I'm gonna do, make sure our gasket surface is nice and smooth. And it's pretty clean, it's in good shape. We didn't bang it up when we did our carrier rebuild. We're gonna install our wear plate and gasket, gasket side down. And again, different manufacturers may have different placements for all this stuff, so there are plenty of places you can find schematics that show you an exact order of how parts need to go in. And on this, I'm gonna use just, again, a very light film of grease on the wear plate. Next step, 
before I go too much further, is I'm gonna uh, do this before I forget, is I'm gonna grease up the splines on the end of the grease on the end of the prop on the end of the drive shaft. Because you want to make sure that every time you drop the gear case you have a good film of grease on here. Or actually not a film. You want you want those splines filled up. Do not have any buildup of grease on top of the drive of the drive shaft itself. If you put any there, just wipe it off. Next thing I'm going to do is put some grease on these shift shaft splines. And again, you don't want any buildup of grease on top of the shaft itself. And then put a thin film here in our speedometer pickup. And the remaining bit of grease I have on my fingers I put in the Woodruff keyhole. In a second we'll go ahead and press in the Woodruff key. Yamaha insists that we press these in. Well, they don't insist, there's just no other way to get them set. Other manufacturers, sometimes you can just gently push them in without having to use any tools. For this, I just use a pair of channel locks. This usually takes a time or two to get everything lined up perfectly. Once everything's got some alignment, yep, it's going in crooked. You don't want to try to press this thing in crooked. And you'll know immediately because it'll fight you every step of the way. Sometimes if it fights with me too much, I just tap it in with a ball peen. It's starting to go. All right, there we go. Now it's important, and I'll probably still need to finish tapping this down with a ball peen. It's important to go ahead and get that thing set all the way down. You don't want it fighting with you when it's time to put the impeller on, which is our next step. So you can see it's sticking out a little bit, it's not bottomed out. Give it a little tap. It's crooked, of course. I'm trying to find an angle to get it and get at the bottom of it. Might have to take a punch to it. That will probably work. Alright. Now more grease. So before I set the impeller again, a thin film of grease on the inside of the impeller. Should help it go towards where it needs to. And then we're just going to get it lined up. There's a little groove in the impeller that you need to line up with your Woodruff key. Press it on down. Press it down until it bottoms out on the wear plate. And now, very light film of grease on the impeller blades themselves. Again, no globs. We just want a little bit in there. So before this pump, when this pump goes into, into action, if it hasn't been put in standing water and given itself a chance to prime and it's pulling, it's pushing, it's, uh, it's pulling water in to dispel air or to get air out of there, um, it's not rubbing on dry metal. Okay, next, next thing is our wave washer assembly. Wave washer is in the middle of two flat washers. Make sure it goes on that way. Next step for our Yamaha is to set the nylon drive shaft spacer and drive shaft collar. So these are gonna. I usually slide the collar all the way, the uh, spacer all the way down. I don't want to spread it apart and force it to gap. I don't want to force it open up more than it needs to. And next comes the drive shaft collar. Now, one important step is I'm going to pull up on the drive shaft. Pull up on the drive shaft, and while I'm pulling up, I'm going to set the drive shaft collar down on the spacer using our drive shaft collar insert that comes with our upper carrier bearing housing puller that we've invented. Is that the first time I've said it correctly? It might be. So, again, I'm pulling up, 
you'll feel that little bit you'll feel some backlash pull out of the drive shaft you're all the way up now I'm just gonna gently tap down spinning and pulling up the whole time and then I'm gonna check and make sure that it's set nice and evenly and there, it's not crooked okay I'm happy with that now the next step the next step can be a little bit tricky it's not too complicated with Yamaha's but there are some other manufacturers where the next step which is setting the water pump housing can be a, a bit of a challenge to keep all the o-rings in place there is one big o-ring on the bottom of this housing that can slip out you really need to just watch that so here you can see we want to avoid having this come loose and sort of flopping around down there during this process. We're just waiting to get pinched in half when we drive bolts into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this thing on down. It's gonna set right on top of our impeller there. Now I'm gonna have a rag or a paper towel or something where I can get a good grip on the drive shaft. Because I'm gonna rotate the drive shaft. It is extremely important that you rotate the drive shaft clockwise. Clockwise rotation sets the impeller blades so that when the drive shaft is turning while the motor is running, it doesn't have to deal with impeller blades that are that are spun in there backwards. That can damage the impeller um, and just really ruin all the progress you've made on this project so far. So I will be pushing down on the water pump housing while I'm spinning the drive shaft clockwise. And you'll feel the impeller blades start to pull up into the water pump housing, which is backwards. Whoops. Okay, let's do that all over again. All right. Yes. All right. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to be spinning drive shaft clockwise while I'm pushing down on the water pump housing until the entire housing is bottomed out and set on top of our wear plate. Okay, now this housing is down, set. Next thing I'm gonna do is, with my hand still on the housing, holding it down, I'm gonna take our water pump mounting bolts here. Get them started by hand. And then spin them on down. Again, you want to keep this housing, make sure that it is being held down firmly all the way. A little bit of grease here. This is our water pickup tube. Okay, now. Next thing I'm doing is taking a look around the bottom of the water pump housing and making sure that we don't see some O-ring sticking out somewhere. And I'm gonna look down in the water pickup tube, give her a little spin, make sure I don't see our O-ring flopping around down in there. Once I'm convinced everything is put together properly, we can go ahead and stick this thing back on the boat, or more technically, back in the motor. So now we're getting ready to hang our gear case. Um, so this is my last chance to take a look at everything here, make sure it's situated correctly. Uh, the complicating factors when you're when you're reinstalling a gear case are not that many, but they can they can definitely make life miserable for you. You want to make sure that um, your boat the the controls are set to neutral. So the shift is in neutral up there at the helm, and you want to make sure that your gear case is in neutral. Um, that way that the the shift splines will align properly with the shift shaft. And the other thing is, is you want to have a little piece of dry cloth or a piece of paper towel or a dry cloth to wrap around the drive shaft if need be while you're installing this because you may have to twist the drive shaft just a little bit to get the drive shaft splines aligned properly as well. I also have a flashlight which I will use to make sure that as I'm getting closer in here and everything is getting close to ready for bolts that I can look up and make sure that I've connected with the water pickup and that I've connected properly with the shift shaft. On some manufacturers, some models, you'll be doing that blind 
and it's really tough to tell if you've connected properly until you have actually put some bolts in the gear case and go, been able to test shift and been able to test to make sure you got water flow going through the motor. So these can be heavy. Um, it's very important to lift as carefully as possible and obviously minimize any exposure to your back. So use legs as much as you can. Um, there's really no perfect way to do this as far as uh, that goes, but you know, you know the basics. Just be as careful as you can. I like to grab up under here where I have a little bit more control. I'm going to visually align drive shaft. Try as much as you can to not let the gear case weight hang on the drive shaft itself. Because you can snap one. Okay. This is about where we're going to need our flashlight. First thing I'm going to do is feel around a little bit. Feel if I can get the splines aligned. And again, we're just feeling around. Okay, I now know that my splines are lined up in the power head. And I'm pretty positive that I've caught the water pickup the way it needs to be caught. And I can visually see that the shift shafts are lining up nicely as well. So what I'm going to do now is grab my flashlight, which I've placed just a little too far away, take a peek. i got visual on the shift shaft, and I'm going to back this thing out just a smidge and make sure I've caught the water pickup. Yep, lined up nicely. Check it again. Yeah, we're in. Now I'm just going to gently work it into place. Next thing to be considerate of, and be very careful with, especially on Yamaha, is their plastic speedometer pickup. Different models may have the speedo pickup, the male side of it, on the gear case. Some of them will have it in the midsection. Wherever it is, make sure that you are aligned properly and do not put any undue force on that water, the speedo pickup or you will be replacing it. You'll hear a nice clean snap, and that'll be your cue to go ahead and drop the gear case back out and replace it. So we're in place. Everything's lined up. Next thing we got to catch is our alignment pins here on the midsection. And before we go that far, at this point is usually where I like to thread a mounting bolt in partially. So that way our gear case can't drop out any. We're going to lock it into place. This does not mean thread the gear case all the way in, thread your bolts all the way in. This just means get them where you can get a, a visual inspection on your dowel pins or your alignment pins and make sure that they're in place. We don't want to fight anything unnecessarily on here. So we're going to spin these in. Spin the always start your gear case mounting bolts by hand. I start almost every machine bolt and machine screw by hand if I can. Take our electric impact. Still holding on the bottom of the gear case. At this point, the bolts should be doing most of the work. Okay. Now I got two bolts in there, just snugged up. Make sure that we're good on our dowel pins. We're lined up pretty well. Just tap it in by hand a little bit. All right, it's ready to close up. And we're just gonna drive that bolt in all the way. We're not gonna give it much torque, just enough to close this thing up. And you'll see that gap between the midsection and the top of the gear case close up. Now we can take our time a little bit and set the remaining bolts, and then we'll torque everything on at once. Okay, so now we're turning in our last bolts here on the gear case. And again, we're making sure we keep the ratchet body clear of the gear case so we don't scratch up any paint. And this is our uh, last couple bolts, and this thing is on. And then we're ready to move to the next step, which is put this thing in the tank or take it to the bow ramp and run the motor we're checking we want to we want to make sure we have good shift and we want to make sure that we see cooling water flow coming out of the uh, telltale up top 
All right.